Okay. Um, I'm going to give a paper on uh, some of the Scandinavian cities in Western Scandinavia, or towns rather than cities. So I will look at some of the royal towns and some of the factors that made them successful. So by the end of the Middle Ages, uh, there were about 16 towns only in Norway. And compared to more than 100 in Denmark and 40 to 50 in Sweden. So while previous research on urbanization in Scandinavia has focused upon the role of the king and the church as both founders and developers of towns, less attention has been directed towards, let me say, local, the local economic and legal judicial preconditions and ramifications for this development. So I will try to give some examples, one example of pre-urban ownership around one of these royal towns. And I will also discuss rural assembly functions taking place within the towns. So I will focus on Norway. So this is mainly a rural society. And compared to, the, to, to Europe, the degree of urbanization in Scandinavia was low, particularly in Norway. But during the Viking Age, separate trade laws, what we call Bjarkeu, developed and homes became separated from the rural uh, just, uh, jurisdiction. And they obtained their own laws and courts. And this defined the urban space then. Um, and beyond the town boundary, what we what is named Tark Mark, the rural law applied. So around 1200, there were approximately 50,000 farm farms in Norway, perhaps around 400,000 people, and only 5% lived of the population lived in towns. That is approximately 20,000 townspeople in total, 10 to 16 towns. So, and this is the rural settlement structure, and what we see on this map is the main <coughs> Uh, the most important royal centers for the rural centers for the governance of this landscape. And some of these towns developed uh, close to these royal manors, and I will uh, show that in a minute. So around 1150, the coastal land of Norway was uh, described as a decapolis, an area with around 10 towns. Um, and we see uh, the, the name of the towns here. Uh, of course, this term Decapolis is also a biblical reference to uh, the kind of a Christian civilizing power. So the number should, numbers should probably not be taken too litera uh, literally. Uh, we find very close connections uh, with uh, royal manors or kings with these uh, red uh, marked towns here. Um, we have also some uh, good arguments that uh, the bishop towns uh, were built on granted royal land uh, in two cases. And we have also royal manors close to these uh, minor towns up uh, in the northwest. So uh, around uh, in the beginning of the 11th century, it looks like the Norwegian king uh, had a relatively stronger grip on trade and towns compared to their European counterparts. If you compare to Denmark, around 1230, only 20 of the around 100 towns were had a uh, royal uh, overlordship or uh, were bona, so-called regalia, towns then. But in Norway, approximately 60 to 80 percent of the towns were more directly connected to the king. So I will look at um, both assembly functions. I will look at, uh, as I said, pre-urban ownership around some of these towns. So what is an assembly site? Let's just start with that very briefly. Uh, thing meetings to resolve legal disputes mainly. You come together from various landscape, vast, big landscapes. You can have up to 400 delegates meeting on the main rural assemblies. But we also have kind of political meetings of judicial character, like for instance, inauguration sites where kings are taken 
and comes kings. And also various uh, places where negotiation between the population, represented by the thing institution, and the king took place. So this is from Iceland, a very, the old thing. This is a contemporary drawing from rather late. What we see here is a thing meeting where delegates comes in, they live in small tents, and so on. So this is how we could imagine these legal assembly sites then. If we look for these rural assembly sites close or in the towns, we find quite many of these actually among the Norwegian towns. We have the law thing, which is a uh, Borga thing, which is located within the town of Borg. We have a half shire thing uh, close to Oslo. That is, uh, we have very little information, archaeological information about these sites. Only two of the sites, which I will show you. Uh, we have some archaeological information. We have different uh, sorts of uh, uh, assemblies, inauguration sites uh, close to Tonsberg. I will show that in particular and uh, law things uh, close to Sheen, in Sheen, and so on. Some of these might uh, predate uh, the towns, while others are probably moved to the towns uh, in their initial phase. So that is what I'm going to look at. I will give you an, an example now. I start with the earliest town in, uh, in Norway, uh, the Kaupang town and we shall look in the area around uh, Kerbang. We find this uh, really huge uh, cooking pit site. This is the site of Kerbang. Here we have this Husby farm, which is kind of a royal farm. And we have a great church up there, and we, here we have this really, really huge cooking pit sites, which dates from 400 BC to around 680. So it's actually a little bit older than Kerbang, the Kerbang site. But we believe it's, here is a close up. What you see here is uh, graves, mounds, and uh, this is the cooking pits, like this. Here you can see it from the geophysics. And this is how they look. So this is a site where people stayed and prepared food during, probably then during the assembly that was taking place um, here. And we have also had, uh, later written sources confirming that this was a thing site. Uh, when we look at the location of this site, we will see that it is very central to, the, uh, to three uh, shires, which we believe were the main, the law area before this Ranrik area was integrated in the law area and into the Norwegian realm. So this Kaupang slash Chölling, this uh, cooking pit site, locates really central to this, to this larger area. So then the idea is that uh, this assembly site attracted people to the area and the town was established nearby the assembly site. Later, uh, we have the Borg uh, uh, site, which became the main rural site then for, oh sorry, for the, the, the whole uh, law area, which now also, um, uh, uh, well, <coughs> also was part of the, the, the rural area. And we see the early royal towns then, they were connected to the, the shires. Uh, we get one town in each of the, uh, the shires. And we also know that the rural assemblies for these shires were moved into the towns. We don't know the chronology of this is not known, but it looks like in the 11th, 12th century, at least, uh, and we have written records from the 13th and 14th century. So we know that uh, the shires, uh, shire, um, assemblies were moved into the towns. And we also know the time where th when these uh, uh, assemblies took place. And um, by moving the rural assemblies into the towns or close by, um, you attracted a lot of people to the towns. 
at certain fixed times. And the question is whether these rural meetings then also became the market uh, uh, periods when, when you had markets in the town. That is a possibility. I will now give you another example with uh, the Haugating, which is one of, it's the best preserved inauguration site in Norway. We know of six inaugurations where kings were taken kings. And this is the medieval town area. And we have the royal castle area here. And we have uh, the large manor of Sejm. That is uh, one of the largest farms in present day Norway, the Jarlsberg farm. That is 50 uh, hectares or so. So it's a really huge farm. And then we have the Haugating up here. And we are going to look more closely at this site in a minute. But I will also just uh, say some words about the property, the pre-urban property structure in this area. Um, so the town is located here. So this is a, com a compilation of all, um, uh, all uh, information we have on property structure in this area. And what we see is that uh, the, the blue uh, farms here, that is uh, royal land while the red farms that belongs, and this is a big cluster of farms, nearly 50 farms, belonging to the St. Olaf's Monastery in the town. And this is recorded in the late uh, 14th century, approximately. But the main argument for this being uh, a pre-urban, uh, large royal estate is that none of the local churches, the other local churches within the town had any uh, property within this cluster of the St. Monas uh, Olaf's Monastery. So the idea is that this was granted land to, uh, to the monastery from the king and that you had this big uh, rural estate uh, where the town was then established. So if we look at uh, the Haugating itself, again we are up here. Uh, it, locates, it locates uh, right on uh, the town uh, boundary, which we know from the, the town law from 1276. Uh, you have a city or a town, I mean here. Um, you have the execution site over here. Uh, it consists of two large mounds and we have also a, a minor mound down here. So we have tried to date this site. So was this site then uh, established before or in the initial phase of the town. Um, so we did just a small trench in it and we got these datings from uh, also uh, human bones and animal bones found in, in, the, in the mound around 950 we could say it dates. So we know from, from before that also the other mound is from the same period. So both these mound, mounds that were really important in the ritual of taking kings on the border between the rural and the, and the uh, town ju jurisdiction were created then around the time we believe the town was established. So to conclude, understanding the development from central space to urban place, we need a better understanding of the local economy and the legal precondition and ramifications of this development. Many of the successful Norwegian towns, they were founded at royal manors and estates. Nidaros, Lade, Bergen, Alrekstad, Tønsberg, Sam, which we just saw, Oslo are the most prominent examples. Towns, they had to attract rural people, and part of the success was to create meeting sites for the rural population by moving legal assemblies into the towns or close to the towns. This may have uh, created fixed meeting and market days in the town. The larger royal towns also had these inauguration sites uh, where king became kings close to the town borders. We have at least three examples of this. We saw the Haugating, but this, it's the same case in, with Ayating and Orko King. And some of these inauguration sites developed to to uh, add to important weapon things, as we can see in the case of Øygarting. I won't go into that now. But in the case of, the, of Haugating, we see the Viking monuments played an important part in the ritual of taking and negotiating with the king. 
and seems to have been um, created then in the initial urban phase. So that's it. Thanks.